Hey everyone, if you're anything like me, you're okay as a tech, but one thing that really puts a dread in your soul is trying to remove connectors from these boards. Particularly if you like want to do a clean job without burning the board, damaging the board, or maybe not damaging the connector. Maybe you want to transplant the connector to another one. You can do it, but 50% of the time you probably stuff it up and melt things and things like that. And I'm one of those people because yeah, I just don't do a good enough job. So what I am better at though is coming up with solutions for these sort of things to help me get these off in a way that I'm no longer part of that equation. So this is what I did. Okay, so this is our usual hot air wand. And now it's on. And I'm going to burn my hands when I grab that nozzle. That's okay. Show's got to go on. So what a lot of people do is they get the board and if you rotate around yeah you hover there you hover there you hover there and it takes about a minute or so and you start to have mistakes you start to get it in a little bit too close a little too far away wander off well I do maybe it's because I have too much coffee but the point is that's the one way we often do it but I don't like that so I thought why not just lay it down like this and more to the point take the hot nozzle off I thought I'd make it a 90 degree nozzle now I started out making this contraption here and this here is an Atten adapter that you often get and I used a 20 mil copper elbow slotted it and then jammed it in it did a pretty good job. I was quite happy with that, but the nozzle was yeah a little bit small. Fine for small connectors, but for the bigger ones, I was finding some of the exterior points were not quite warming up. So I ordered some 22 mil ones. Unfortunately, that didn't work out so well simply because of the fact that this exterior diameter here, trying to fit it in, didn't quite do the job. It kept slipping out. I wasn't 100% happy and then it dawned on me that I'm a great big idiot what I really needed is just a connector that goes straight on there lo and behold the one inch 90 degree pipe elbow that's all you need don't need these adapters don't need anything like that just get a one inch copper 90 degree elbow the one modification you have to make to it though in order for it to go over these little locking bumps is you've got to put a bit of a chamfer on the inside so something like one of these deburrers let's get in there do a few rounds do it better than I do because I'm left-handed it confuses me once you take the edge off as I have over here you should then just simply be able to push it on and it will lock in. Like so. Hey, that's not going anywhere and it's going to do our job. That's a $3.50 part at most hardware stores, at least over here. The next part of the equation is something to hold it for you. So I've got a little PVC 40 45 millimeter diameter pipe holder just happens to fit perfectly for that so now we have a hot air bidet that will blow lots of lovely well controlled air into appropriate locations to hold the boards in place I am going to use a slightly oversized lab lift as we call them I know maybe there's other names for them this here is a 200 by 200 size one. Stick it off to the side. Then we can grab a board that we want to take apart from, the connector from. I'm going to start with one of these PC ones. So we've got a HDMI, that's pretty classic. It's a pin through, so it's not quite as uh, easy, so to speak, to extract as an SMD one. We'll give that a shot, see how it goes. Bring the nozzle under it. Set our height, I usually like around about one centimeter or somewhere between one centimeter and a half inch there 
What I really like about this setup is that I can now bring my microscope over to keep an eye on the connection and know exactly when it's ready to go. To give you an idea of what it's doing, we'll give you the picture-in-picture -picture view as well. Okay, for this connection we're going to start at say 420 and we're going to set the air to about 40. This is something you're going to have to work out for yourself. A bit of experimentation because everybody's setup is going to be different. But around the 400, around the 30 to 50 is where you're going to want to be. Extractor on. Hot air active. Let's count the time. I'm just going to focus down here on the bottom edges. So we're really just going to be looking for that solder to change. Now the nice thing about this large lab lift that I've got is I can rest my hand on the board and adjust the view a little bit or adjust the positioning of the connector over the hot air. It also helps me just hold it so that when I do things like scratch testing the pad, it doesn't come off. Looks like that's starting to reflow, re melt. Just there. Yep. Are we ready to come out? Oh, we already are. Wow. It was even quicker than I expected. Alright, let's have a look at the connector. Well, apart from the dust and the dirty flux, that's a pretty immaculate extraction. No damage, they could easily be reused. Which is exactly what we want to be able to do. Let's have a look at the board. Alright, so this is the side that was being beaten by the air. And we can see there is a little bit of melting going on there. So maybe in future I can put a bit of aluminium tape or something to protect that. Nothing here on this connector. Obviously the holes have still got solder in them. But overall you would not know that that has been exposed to the hot air like that. I'll look at the other side. Absolutely perfect. No problems at all really does make life so much easier all right so there you have it cheap easy anybody can do that optional extras here if you want perfect connector removals and reinstallation with basically no damage at all to your board it's like a real professional job without the professional budget so yeah 350 for the connector a dollar for that, a piece of scrap board, and if you want to get fancy, get a proper lab lift assembly. It will make things a lot easier. You can use some wood and props and things like that, but definitely I suggest investing the money into a lab lift. It does make it easier. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.